In this video, you're gonna see how I made the hands and legs for the puppet, and then we're gonna put it all together. In my puppet building series I did last summer, I did an in-depth video on how to build arm rods and poseable fingers. I'm still gonna show you the process in this video, but for extra details, click on this link. Now we're gonna make the hands. You can make the hands smaller or larger depending on your character. You can do it however you like. On average, I like to use about an eight to nine inch length for the arms. It gives you a lot of good movement for performance. Just like that, the arms are all done. So these arms are gonna go on just like that. But we'll do that at the same time that we attach the legs. He's gonna need a lot of grooming too, but we're gonna wait till he's completely put together first. These are the scaled up pattern pieces from our sculpture. The only difference I made is I added about an inch and a half of length to match the length of the arm. That way the proportions will work out a little better. Now there's two ways to do the feet. The simple way is to use this foot pattern to do the top and bottom of the feet, sandwiching the foam. And then you would just stitch the bottom of the leg to the foot but I like to make a separate pattern for the top. I'll show you how I do it. So the width of this leg is about three and a half inches. So I wanna make a hole about that same circumference right here. Now what I'm gonna do is cut that circle out, but first I'm gonna make a little snip in the back, like that. And then carefully cut all the way around. So I'm gonna grab some new paper and trace it out on here. So I start off by tracing the toes just to register it. That way you can line it up. And then I'm gonna finish cutting this foot straight down the middle like that, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt these feet just about that much. Trace this side. Trace this side. And I'll just make these curves a little smaller so it's about the same size as the original one. Kind of like that. Then I'll cut it out. And there we have it. Now this new piece will become the top of the foot. Having this piece instead will make our sewing job a lot easier. You'll see soon. Now let's trace the mountain fur.
So this is why I like to make the separate top of the foot. Since we have it cut out like this, this can open up and we can very easily stitch it straight along that seam. That way when we close it up at the end, it's just one seam straight down the middle. Now let's cut out the foam feet. For the foot, I'm gonna trace along the inside with the Sharpie. That'll take it in about a quarter of an inch, which is a pretty good size for the foam of the foot. Just gonna make sure that I cut to the inside of this thick line. You could use the same EVA foam that we used for the head, but for the feet, I like to use a softer foam. This is regular cushion foam you can get at any fabric store. For the feet, I like to use a one inch thickness. Here we go. There we go. If I cut this pattern on a foam and roll these edges together, it would be about a one inch diameter anyway. So I really only need that bulk toward the top. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start off by tracing the fabric leg pattern. Then I'll mark out the knee. I want the knee to be about four inches from the bottom. So I'll draw a line right about there. And then I'll take in the pattern about a little more than a half an inch, maybe about three quarters of an inch. That'll compensate for the thickness of the foam. And I'll mark my center. And I want this to be about one inch thick. So I'll draw a half inch on each side. There they are. Now let's cut them out of the one inch foam. I'll add a little glue. I'll let it get a little tacky before I put it together. Shaping the pattern in this way makes the upper leg stiffer and the lower leg softer, which automatically creates a nice spot for the leg to bend. Let's see how it fits. I'm not gonna turn the whole thing inside out for this. I'm just gonna kinda set it in, see how it goes. Oh yeah. That looks nice. Now I'm gonna stitch up this back seam on the leg, put the foam in, and then close it all up. Here we go. So now we're gonna attach the arms and legs to our puppet. There's two main methods to do this. We're gonna use both. One method for the legs and another one for the arms. But either method would work for both. For the legs, I wanna use doll joint. There's a link to these down in the description. What's nice about this is they kinda of work like nuts and bolts. So it allows things to swivel. Here's how you attach them. So the one side has a peg and the other side looks like a washer, but it actually snaps in. But once they snap together, they cannot come off without breaking it. So you wanna do it when you're ready. I'm gonna waste this one just to show you guys how it works. But there's these little ridges in there, almost like a zip tie, the way it works and then you can push it in like that. So if there's a lot of material, um, you can leave it just like that, but if it was just fabric to fabric, you can get as close down as that. So like I said, this piece is wasted now, I'm just gonna throw it out. So don't push it through until you're ready. Also, it can go in either way, but when doing it with a puppet, you wanna make sure that the peg isn't poking into your arm. So this is the side you want into the body, and this is the side you want into the leg. Now just to tack it in, I'm gonna hot glue this to the foam of the leg. You wanna make sure you don't accidentally do it upside down, or else the peg won't go in. Also make sure you don't get any glue inside that hole, or it could block the pathway for the peg. Now to close this up, you could stitch it and just make sure you leave the center open or you can hot glue it. For today, I'm gonna hot glue it. Now I'm gonna trim away a little bit of the fur so I can see a little better. Make sure I didn't cover up that hole.
Okay, now these guys are ready to go. Let's put the pegs in. Now you could have the pegs go through the foam and the fur. Today I'm gonna do it just through the fur. Here's the best way to do it. Rather than using scissors to cut a little hole, that can spread and make more uh, hair fibers fall out. The best way to do it is to use an awl. An awl is kind of like a screwdriver that just has a sharp point on it. There's a link to this down below. So first I'm gonna find about where I want the legs to be, which I think that that's fine right there. So let me take a look in here. You may notice that it's black inside here now. All I did was spray paint the foam at the same time I painted the arm rods. I think it just looks a little nicer. Okay. I'll make a little mark with the Sharpie about there and I'll carefully poke that hole through. Again, what's nice about the awl is it doesn't really cut the fibers, it more just opens it up. Now I can put this peg in, just like that. And then I'll put this one in. There they are, I hope you can see that. There's one, there's the other. And I'm just gonna snap these on, just like this. You'll be able to hear it snap together. Ready? So there's one. There's the other. Now our puppet has some fun little legs. And the arms are super simple. Decide where you want to put them for your character, and then I do a simple whip stitch to attach them. Here's how I do it. All right, there he is. He's a big furry mess. So now the puppet is pretty much done. You could leave the fur like this and add whatever features you want. One more thing you could add to this puppet if you want is called the sleeve. That's just a tube of fabric, the same circumference as the bottom, that comes down about eight inches. Professional TV puppets commonly have that. It's to cover the performer in case they accidentally come a little bit too high into frame. That way their skin or shirt isn't showing. And it just looks like an extension of the puppet. But in the next video, we're gonna learn how to groom and style the fur. Those types of skills can really elevate your puppet building and give your puppets a much more professional look. Anytime you can change the look of the fabric from how you bought it, it's making it much more unique and less likely that someone already made a puppet that's similar. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for hanging out. See you soon.